Hi, my name is Paul from High School Physics Explained. Let's have a look at this setup over here. I have here a piece of wire that is free to move like a swing. And I have it connected to a power supply. And part of that circuit, I've included this variable resistor, which allows me to alter the current flowing through it. And you'll see to here also two bar magnets. Let's see what happens when I turn on the power. I'll just steady it. And now I'm going to increase the current. You'll see the swing is pushed inwards. Why is that? Let's turn it off. And now what we're going to do is we're going to change the direction of the current by altering simply the terminals at the power pack. Steady it down. Turn the power on. And increase the current. It swings out in the opposite direction. So why is that? Well, let me explain it to you and I'll come back and explain this and determine also what the polarity is of those bar magnets. So if we're going to examine the effect of a current bearing wire in a magnetic field, that is it will experience a force, we're going to need a magnetic field. And so I have here two representations of a magnetic field and the top is going into the page and the bottom is going from right to left and it's going to represent the same magnetic field. So imagine that the top one is basically your eye looking down that way, going away from your eye, so therefore into the magnetic field. The most important factor to understand is that in order for a current bearing wire to experience a force, the current or actually the charges in the current must be moving perpendicular to the magnetic field. So if I start first of all with a wire that looks like this, then that of course is similar to a wire moving this way, so it's the same representation. Notice that in both cases the wire is parallel to the magnetic field, it will not experience a force. Now if I take this wire and place it in this magnetic field, you'll notice it's going from left to right, what would it look like down here? Well, it would look like this. In other words, it'd be going into the page here. Notice now we definitely have a wire perpendicular to the magnetic field. What if I take this wire and now place it at that angle? Now, you may say, oh, that's going to change it because I've changed the angle. But if you look very carefully, this line is still perpendicular to the magnetic field line. So we're going to still get a maximum force. But if I place it down here, you will see that this wire now is not perpendicular to the magnetic field, but it's not parallel either. So in essence, what we're getting is, is only a component, and that is in this component, and in fact it would be in that direction, is the part that will experience the force. So you get a weakening of the force simply because we don't have it at exactly 90 degrees. So what are the variables that affect the strength of the force on the wire? Well, clearly we need a magnetic field. Secondly, we need a current. And thirdly, we need a certain amount of length. And then finally, we have the component of the sine of the angle. So putting that all together, the force that is exerted on a current bearing wire is equal to the product of the magnetic field multiplied by the current multiplied by the length and multiplied by sine of the angle. That is the motor effect. The motor effect is when a current bearing wire experiences a force in a magnetic field. So now let's have a quickly look at a question and see this in action. Well, the formula of course is equal to F is equal to B I L sine theta. If you look very carefully, this is no longer perpendicular to the magnetic field, but we do get some force because there is a component that is definitely perpendicular to the magnetic field. Our B, of course, is 0 0.05. The current is equal to 2. 
Now at this stage, I could try to work out L. Notice that L is not 50 centimeters. L is this side of it. And the good thing here is, is that L sine theta is actually the vertical component of the length of wire. So we can substitute straight away in the 50 centimeters. And of course that is 0 0.05 meters. But if you wanted to work out L and use the angle of 30 here, you'll notice that L will actually be equal to one meter. When I calculate that out, I'm going to get 0 0.05 Newtons. Am I finished? No, because we have a force, which is a vector quantity. I need a direction. So using the hand rule that you prefer, noticing that the conventional current is going up the page, we only want the component that is perpendicular. So we have a current perpendicular wise that is going to contribute to the force that is in that direction. So using your hands rule, in this case, I'm going to use my right hand. You're going to switch your hand, have your fingers going from right to left. My current is going up the page. Your palm of your hand will be facing towards you. So in other words, the force is outwards. So now let's go back to our demonstration. So now that you've understand a little bit of the concept of uh, Lorenz's forces, and the idea of the motor effect where a current bearing wire experiences a force in a magnetic field. Let's examine this again. And now let's see if we can establish the direction of the magnetic field. So I can use again two rules. I can use my right hand slap rule or I could use left hand Fleming's rule. I'm going to use my right hand rule, but you use the rule that you're comfortable with. If you look very carefully, I have the black terminal connected to this side of my swing. That means that the current is going in from the red terminal from this point. So the current relative to you is going that direction. We know that the force that is experiencing is in that direction. And so if you use your right hand, we use our thumb for the direction of the current, which is in that direction. And we use our palm of our hand to the direction of the force, you will see that my fingers are now pointing downwards. That means my magnetic field here is downwards, which means the top section here is my North Pole and the bottom here is my South Pole. And so I've just established using my right hand the direction of all three components, the current, the magnetic field lines downwards, and of course the force. Now, just in case you're using Fleming's hand rules, we use our left hand in this case. And the quick way to remind yourself in terms of the directions with left hand is think of FBI. So your thumb is first, F, B is second, so it's your index finger, and I is going to be your third finger. And now what we need to do is orientate this again to the situation we have. So again, the force in this case is going to go in that direction. So we're going to orientate the force in that direction. The magnetic field is, well, we don't know, but we do know the current is going towards you. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip it down like so. And you can see here with my index finger pointing downwards, which is the B, which is the magnetic field, is pointing downwards. And again, that is consistent with what we just discussed. The magnetic field means that the north is at the top and the south is to the bottom. And of course, I can use both rules if I switch the current in the opposite direction. Well, I hope that has helped you understand the motor effect. Thanks for watching. Well, I hope that helped you understand the concepts. Thanks for watching. Please remember, like, share, and subscribe. And by the way, drop a comment down below if the video particularly has been useful. And finally, consider supporting me via Patreon. The idea is to develop resources and equipment to continue to teach physics at a high school level. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.